Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of Daddy's Home 2. Daddy's Home was a huge surprise hit. It was a monster at the box office, and it was like a fun, harmless holiday comedy. So naturally, they made a second one. And I thought the first trailer was alright for this, and then the trailers gradually... Uh. So expectations were low, and I have to say, I think it even came in below pretty low expectation. I thought this was kind of a hot mess, y'all. So let's go ahead and talk about positives first. So there are a couple of laughs here. I, I chuckled a couple of times. And that really ties into like my main positive in that it's going to be a crowd pleaser for the target audience here. If you are interested in seeing Daddy's Home 2 and those trailers have really appealed to you, I think that you're going to find a lot to laugh at and smile at and enjoy here because my theater was laughing quite a bit. Unfortunately, most of the time I wasn't laughing with them. So this is only kind of a positive, but I do think that it's going to be an overall crowd pleaser. And I think, of course, there are some nice little messages and there's some cute moments here and there. So all of that kind of adds up to a positive in and of itself. But really, I was struggling to come up with positive things to say because I, I really didn't like this movie. So let's talk about the many things I didn't like. And most all of them just kind of come down to the script is a mess. So this is a big old school type of family slapstick comedy. All of the humor is super slapsticky and super lowbrow. A lot of physical humor, some of which I think works but a lot of which does not. All of the storylines are just shoved in and none of them, I don't think a single storyline actually was thought through all the way by the writers. We get to a happy ending, of course, but none of it is earned and it is even capped off with like a big old song, kumbaya, cheesy Christmas moment there at the end that I was just like, oh my God. Gosh, I want to throw up a little bit. This is too much. <laughs> and within those storylines, there are a couple that bothered me particularly. The first one is that we have another, like, child crush romance subplot. And I'm so sick of these, like, children having romances in films. Why is this needed? Why do we need to see, you know, this little 10 or under kid and his crush, and being told to just go kiss her, and then being told to do things that were very inappropriate and kind of appalling, actually. And then there's kind of a twist with that storyline that actually didn't make any sense when you go back and rehash the instances leading up through his developing crush. So I was like, what? Okay. We have parent shoplifting, we have kids getting drunk, we have kids shooting people. I mean, it just is crazy. These children in this movie, for one, are just crazy. You want to be in there, like, parenting these kids and laying down the law. It's just, like, it's crazy. And, of course, they fall back on the easy jokes, on the, oh, this girl just, like, can't stick off of her cell phone for more than five seconds. And, of course, in a, like, bro comedy like this, Gotta have those homophobic jokes in there, too. I also don't think it's a good idea for Mel Gibson to be playing these type of roles. Honestly, I was watching and it looked like Mel Gibson just being Mel Gibson and having a camera on him. It was like a misogynistic, homophobic mess as a character. And that's not a good thing. Maybe he should try to make himself a little bit more sympathetic now that he wants to return to on-screen roles and not just behind the camera work. Mark Wahlberg, Will Ferrell, uh, John Lithgow, they're all fine. They all do what they're asked to do. Nobody's performance is great. There's no real standouts here. And that can be applied with the jokes as well. There are some chuckles, but most of them just kind of like fall flat. They're tired jokes. They've been there, done that, seen this type of jokes over and over and over again. And admittedly, this kind of like slapstick uh -huh, kind of comedy is just not my thing at all. 
So I'm not the target audience here. Despite the Christmas shirt I'm wearing right now, I'm not really a big holiday person. So this movie just is a package of no when it comes to me, honestly. And to have a movie that has everything just blow up, like to really severe levels, and then have none of those conflicts actually worked through at all. Like not even in the slightest, not even proper discussions. And then to shove in this kumbaya song funny moment was just, ugh. Oh, it was lazy, feel good writing at its worst. And for me, that's kind of what Daddy's Home 2 represented as a whole. Is this holiday comedy formula at its worst. So yeah, I can't really recommend this movie on a personal note. If you're looking for a holiday themed funny kind of raunchy comedy, go with the moms over the dads in this case. I would definitely pick A Bad Mom's Christmas over seeing Daddy's Home too. But I will say again, my theater was laughing. Most people laughed with that feel good energy. So if the trailers have seemed really funny to you and you really enjoy Daddy's Home, go see this. I think you will have a nice time. Otherwise, I think you can honestly just skip it. And if you're really bored and it comes on TV, give it a shot, I guess. So that is my review of Daddy's Home 2. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, click like down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Are you excited to see Daddy's Home 2? And what did you think of the first film? Let me know either in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your support. Mwah. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!